Hi, welcome back. I want to pick up where we left off on the subject query performance. Now that you've finished all the lessons on joining tables together and finished up all your exercises, it's a, it's a good time to segue back to this topic and re-explore it since we've added another dimension that impacts the efficiency or performance of a query and that's how we join tables together. In this lesson I'm going to walk through a couple examples and then give you a simple exercise in, in the end. Again, the goal of this lesson, like the first one, isn't to try to turn you into a guru on understanding query optimization and query performance because that's just not a reality. But it's to, again, to dip our toes in the water and, and give you kind of a feel for how you would make that determination if, if your query is an efficient one or not. And it, and it is an important subject, so don't blow it off. You should have finished your exercises by now, and so what I want to do is uh, go over the solutions to the exercises and cover it from the perspective of were the queries that you've been assigned to do, what's, what's the relative performance or efficiency of those queries. So let's get started. I have your uh, the, the first findings exercise solution up on the screen and that's the one where you were asked to join the findings table to the patient table and to the medical concept table and return all the rows where the findings subtype code was equal to BS. For anyone that cares, BS is an abbreviation that stands for vital signs. And that in 50 cents will definitely not get you a cup of Starbucks in Seattle. So before we look at the efficiency of the joins itself, what we want to examine, just like before, is our row restriction, because our row restriction really predicates how the tables are going to be opened and joined together, and the relative efficiency of that. So, so as we look at this example where the finding subtype code is equal to VS, and that's from the findings table, the findings table is clearly the table that, that we're going to open first, based on our row restriction. And as we look at that, we can see that it's doing a, a table scan. And you can go count the rows and, and validate that. But it's doing a table scan. It's not going in off of a key. So that's where you have the, the null marker showing here. So we're definitely doing a table scan off of that. And, and why is that? Well, because we don't have a key to go off of finding subtype code, an index, or it's not the primary element in the primary key, the first element I should say. So let's take a look at the DEL findings file where we have our finding schema and let's validate that. If we look at that we'll see the primary key does have the uh, finding type code in it but not the finding subtype code and even if it did it's not the first column so it's not going to help us out and we only have an index created on the service create timestamp so we don't have a key to go in or an index so we're doing a table scan and that's just the bottom line with this query now what can we do to make it a little better performing well we could go and possibly get the DBA the administration database administration group to add a index on the finding subtype code whether they're willing to do that or not for a variety of reasons is altogether a different story, but that would be our option for this type of thing. And again, I don't want you to get the idea that every time you write a query that's not efficient, you need to go run to the database administration group and, and try to get them to add an index, because it's just not a good idea. And it's not a good idea, because if we went and requested an index on every every time we needed one, we'd have to put indexes on every column on the table and that would not be very efficient for, for the design of, our, of the database. Okay, uh, if, if we look down on the joins, we can see, well, once we get past our row restriction that causes a table scan, we're indeed going in against the other two tables, against the primary key when we're joining to the healthcare patient table we're joining where the patient primary key is equal to the primary key and where the medical concept primary key is equal to the medical concept foreign key 
And if we have a look at the medical concept table, we'll see that medical concept primary, that the med, med concept PK is the primary key. So we're going to get efficient access on the join. On the patient table, same thing holds true. We're joining the primary key of the findings table to the primary key of the patient table, and that's going to give us efficient access as well. So let's uh, transition over to our exercise, to our picture solution. So you had an exercise you were given where you were asked to join the pitching table to the players table and also to the teams table and you were doing that where the year ID is equal to 1968 and the pitching team ID was equal to SLN and again all I did was add the two keywords explain extended before the select statement so I could get an explain plan that we could look at. This one a little bit different as, as we look at this one we're actually going in and we are using an index and so our access and, and if you also notice the primary key that we're opening up is we're not opening up first the pitching table we're opening up the, the teams table and this is an interesting and subtle one and it gives you kind of an idea of the the query optimizer which is a process in in SQL that basically determines what's the most efficient join strategy if we look at this one you might expect that the pitching table would be the first one that the first table that's opened up but that's that's not the case the first table we're opening up is the teams table and we're returning one row even though our row restriction is specifying and BB pitching team ID is equal to SLN well let's let's go take a look at at that let's look at the teams table and first let's look at our join between the two so we're joining on tr the the teams table where the team ID is equal to BB pitching team ID well if we go over to the pitching table we'll see that we do have on the team ID we have an index created it's a non-unique index so it can have duplicates and if we go over and we look at the the DDL teams database we see that the primary key is the team ID and so the the query executor as it's processing our query before it's or the query optimizer before it's going to pass it off to the query executor to run it is basically parsing and analyzing this code and saying okay here's here's the join criteria here's the row restriction well it makes more sense to me to open up the the teams table first because there's a join on it and it just so happens that that's the primary key of the teams table and we're only looking for the one team so very efficient access so that's what it's going to do uh, the next table it's going to open up is the BB pitching and it's going to join it and it's going to use the index team ID so there's an index again if we go back and look at our schema we indeed have an index on the team ID that it can use and so we're asking it to return an index which it's doing and because it's going able to go in off of an index it only has to partially read the table through the index reading 2,894 rows finally we can join on the we're, we're joining up on the BB players so we're joining the BB players table to the pitching table on the player ID and again we get a very efficient join on that one as well because if we go to the players table we'll see that we have an index a unique index created on the player ID so back to our query we have a unique index on the player ID 
and so we're basically joining primary key off to the player ID unique index and that's giving us efficient access so this is a very uh, efficient query in terms of how it's set up and constructed all right excellent now and and as as you're looking at this I want you to know that while one other point I want to make when we look down at our where statement we have a compound where statement where we're saying your idea is equal to 1968 and BB pitching team is equal to SLN well what the query optimizer is going to use is it's going to try to use the most efficient access and again you can kind of get into the head of if you will of the the query opt query optimizer just by understanding how to read the schema and kind of again to retouch from the first lesson the thing that's important to understand about query efficiency and to extend out to joins is that the first thing that we're all, that the optimizer is always going to look at is the row restriction what's the most efficient table for me to open up first and when I join tables am I able to go in and get the data from both sides on a key value where I'm either joining it on the primary key or I might be joining on the primary key to an index to a non to a unique or non unique index and so it's going to try to do its best based on the code that you give it to create a query that requires the least amount of, 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 of disk access so you've got enough information now uh, I'm gonna have you go off and do a simple lesson with one of your other exercises to help reinforce what we've just covered and I'll see you a little later bye